Please pause for the moment of silence. Please stand for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. A recap on last night's successful pageant. And a historic assassination. Stay tuned, Texas, because NHS TV Live starts right now. I'm here with our 2018 Mr. Texan, Eli Witherspoon. So, how does it feel? Man, this is, this is crazy. Didn't expect this at all. I try to go into everything I do, not really expecting much out of it. But this is this is a real surprise, man. I'm ecstatic right now. I'm on top of the world. Um, how long did it take you to prepare your act? Oh man, I worked on that for about a solid two days, three days tops. Yeah. So what do you plan on doing whenever you get out of high school? Out of after ah, Jesus. After I graduate high school, I plan on going to Howard University in Washington, D.C. and majoring in political science in hopes of one day becoming a civil rights attorney. There you have it. 2018 Mr. Texan right here. Back to you, anchors. Congratulations, Eli, on the well-deserved win. Now, with the popular debate on the best video game heating up, Jack went out to get some feedback in this week's Texans on Main Street. So Fortnite or PUBG? Fortnite. Why? It's just, it's more fast paced and it's more like cartoonish and it just kind of fits my style of play. I know what you mean. Have you been playing Fortnite? Uh, every now and then. Have you gotten any eliminations in it? Uh, no. Just mostly dying? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, a couple kills here and there. Um, yeah, lots of deaths on my part. Do you have a gamer ID that you want to share with anyone? Um, it's Mr. Russ 411. Mr. Russ 411. All right. PUBG or Fortnite? PUBG. PUBG. Me too, man. Me too. I feel like yeah. I feel like we're alone in this world together. Cause everyone's saying Fortnite, and yeah, yeah. that game's trash. <laughs> My personal opinion. Okay. So, how many hours have you put in Fortnite? Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe 200. 200, 300. Okay, okay. How many hours do you have in Fortnite? 100 for solos. Yeah. And squads, I'm not really sure. And then, well, 11 hours or 12 hours, I think, for solo, not very much. And then squads, like, 7 or 8. Oh, yeah. Can you do the emote from it? The what? The, like, it, it's an emote where you put the an L and then you, like, go, like, Nothing against Fortnite, but the Take an L music is very <laughs> creepy to me. Peace brought between two early groups, and Wesley takes us back to the very first Olympic Games in this week's Yesterday's News. Good morning, Texans, and welcome back to Yesterday's News. Back again to dish out your weekly dose of history. So, let's get into our top stories. We open this week's show on a somber note as we remember the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was tragically killed 50 years ago today. King was without a doubt one of the most celebrated civil rights activists of his time, and his marches, like the Selma March we covered two weeks ago, inspired countless others to take up the fight for equality. King was only 39 years old at the time of his death. 
Dr. King fought for peace in the 60s, and it seems like others are doing the same thing all the way back in the 1600s. Almost 400 years ago, the Pilgrims of Plymouth and the Wampanoag tribe signed the very first peace treaty between Native Americans and colonists. The treaty made both sides promise to protect and aid each other in times of hardship and helped pave the way for the timeless story of the first Thanksgiving. Diving into the world of sports, this week in 1896 also saw the first modern Olympic Games. The Olympics were based on an ancient Greek tradition and were appropriately hosted in Greece, but this time the champions came from all over the world. The nine-day event was a smash hit with all 14 countries who participated and has started a tradition that continues to this day, albeit with quite a few more sports and a lot more athletes to boot. And finally, I leave you with a remarkable story about a spaghetti harvest in Switzerland, reported by the BBC in 1957. Pictured here are spaghetti farmers hard at work picking noodles straight out of the trees in a record season. Oh, and did I mention that the story aired on April Fool's Day? That's right, Texans. With April Fool's earlier this week, I just had to cover some kind of historic prank. And what better than a national news station that convinced millions of viewers that pasta grows on trees? And that's the way it was. Be sure to tune in again next week when mankind will be introduced to the stars. But until then, Texans, thank you for watching this week's edition of Yesterday's News. Yeah. Wanna hear a joke about spaghetti? Sure. What do you call a fake noodle? What? An impasta. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for laughing. Hated that. Hated that. <laughs> you supported me. This was more. No, okay. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for all things new to come. And some upcoming information on our jambalaya ticket giveaway that you won't want to miss. Thanks for watching, Texans. This has been NHS TV Live. I didn't like it. <laughs>